Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter, and this is Cookies and Canvas for Kids. All right. So today we're going to be painting mushroom leapfrog and I'm going to be eating some really delicious almond oatmeal cookies. So let's paint our canvas and eat our cookies. All right, so for the materials today, I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 canvas. And of course you can switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to use acrylic paint. The colors I'm using are titanium white, cobalt blue, burnt umber, which I will refer to as brown. Uh, this is green oxide, deep yellow, and fluorescent orange, and Mars black. And again, you can switch up those colors if you'd like. I'm going to be using three brushes today. The brushes I'm using are a half inch wide bristle brush, a number eight round brush, and a number one round brush. And I will probably call these small, medium, and large as we go through the process. And again, you can switch those up a little bit if you'd like. You're gonna need a cup of water for washing your brushes, and you're gonna need a paper towel for drying your brushes. And below um, in the description, I'm gonna be providing you with a whole bunch of stuff. One of them is a link where you can go and get a convenient kit that has all of these um, materials in it, a DIY do-it-yourself um, painting kit. And I'm also going to be giving you written instructions for this particular painting that you can print out and use, as well as a downloadable image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as a visual reference as you go along. And probably the most important thing I'm going to put down there is a recipe for my delicious almond oatmeal cookies. And that's all you're going to need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for this first step is we're gonna use our large bristle brush. We're gonna be painting the sky and we're gonna be using just blue. Um, what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna kind of give myself an outline for, for my land. And you can really have a whole bunch of fun with how you want this land to go. But I'm gonna start maybe a few inches up on the right hand side. I'm gonna give myself kind of like a little bit of a hill over here. And then I'm just gonna paint from there up with blue. Um, I'm going to just kind of do like a left to right almost kind of crisscrossy type brush stroke. You could do circles, you could do dots, whatever type of brush stroke you want to do is perfectly fine for this step. Um, you could even do two coats if you want that um, blue to be like a deeper darker blue. So totally up to you, whatever um, brush stroke you want to do. But what you want to try and accomplish is a nice even coat. So once you get it all on there, what I like to do is I will just kind of like loosely brush my, um, use my brush to kind of brush it back and forth just so I have a nice kind of even coat throughout the whole sky. Um, and we're going to be putting other elements onto this sky. So even if it's not perfect and if you have, you know, little brush strokes going through it or, you know, dots or light spots or dark spots, don't worry about it because you're going to be having so many other elements on this sky that it's going to be okay if you don't have perfect coverage. Um, but one of the tricks to getting a really nice coverage is you can do it once, let it dry, and then put a second coat right on top of it. And that will get rid of any kind of brush strokes that um, if you don't like the look of them, or it'll give you, again, that deeper, darker, richer um, look to it. So totally up to you. And your paint might be thicker than mine um, or thinner than mine, and that too will add to how your paint looks versus my paint. Um, so if your paint is thicker, um, you may not see as many brush strokes as I see. Um, if your paint is thinner uh, or more 
looser, I guess is another word I could use, um, you might see more paint strokes. So it's, you know, everybody's gonna be using a different kind of paint, unless you get my kit, of course, then you'll be using exactly the same paint as I'm using, um, but how it looks to you is, you know, your visual preference. And like I said, once I get it all on here, I'm gonna kind of just lightly, I'm not really pressing my brush very hard. I'm just kind of doing this to get all of, uh, make sure I've got all the little spots covered. And even if I have light spots and dark spots, I am so okay with that because it might just give the illusion of, you know, little clouds out there or something. So I'm okay with the light spots and dark spots. But what I really am concentrating on right now is just making sure I have the whole sky painted. So I see some spots here that have, um, I missed the paint. So that's where I'm going back and just kind of doing this on the whole thing. And then we are gonna use the same brush for the next step. So when you get done this step, I want you to wash and dry that big brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the land. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush and I'm gonna be using brown and green. I'm gonna be applying it with dots and I am going to make the bottom and the right side darker than the left side because we're gonna have a big moon over here. So I'm gonna have more green on the left and more brown on the right. So right now I loaded my brush with green and brown and I'm gonna start just dotting it on here. So just dot, 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 dot. The next time I pick up my brush, maybe I'm just gonna pick up, or pick up, the next time I pick up paint, I'm gonna pick up maybe just brown. And this is gonna get a little bit darker as it dries. So just know that, you know, it might be a little bit on the lighter side right now, but as it dries, it will definitely get a little bit darker. And you wanna make sure you go all the way down to the bottom of your canvas. So I'm using mostly brown with a little bit of green in this section that I'm working on right now. But as I work my way towards the top of that little land hill, I'm gonna be picking up more green. And when I get to where it hits the sky, I don't want a nice clean um, line, so I'm gonna just make sure I dot a messy line up into that sky. So that way it looks like it's just the little tops of grass. And then I'm just gonna kinda keep dotting here, dot, 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 and I'm gonna keep dotting until I get this entire area covered. And then when you're done with this step, we are gonna use the same brush for the next step, but you'll wanna wash it and dry it. So I'm just gonna kinda keep on dotting here. You don't have to get every tiny little speck of the canvas covered, but if you can if you can get a good amount covered, that's great. It's gonna make it look a little bit more filled in and like you completed the whole thing. Um, and then over on this side, I'm gonna just use mostly green. It's okay if you dot into your brown, that's gonna make it look like it's a nice gradual area where it goes dark to light over on this side. And again, I did not wash my brush between going from the brown to the green. I just am reloading it with just green instead of green and brown. I'm gonna go all the way over here. And some of you might want to paint the edges or the sides of your canvas. When you do that, it makes your painting look like it's all nice and complete and you won't have to put a frame around the edges because it'll be all nice and finished. But that's you know something if you wanna do, you're more than welcome to. And I am all done with that step. So in preparation for the next step, I'm gonna wash and dry this same brush. Take a bite of my cookie and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting the moon. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush and I'm gonna be painting with white and a little bit of black and a little bit of brown because when I look at the moon, it's got little craters in it and that's why I'm gonna be using a little bit of black and brown. So how I'm gonna start this is I'm gonna start it with just a touch of white on my brush, just a little bit, and I'm gonna do the edge of the moon first and I'm not gonna do a really clean line because I want it to almost look like it's glowing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start up here and I'm gonna make it in 
make sure I have like a circle type of shape and then I'm going to lightly take that paint along the edge and just kind of almost work it into my sky a little bit. And then I'm going to finish painting in the rest. So I'm going to start with white. I didn't wash my brush and now I'm going to do these like little circles. And as I get towards this part of the, the left side of the moon, I'm going to add a little bit of black and a touch of uh, brown in it as well. So that way it looks like a real moon because we totally want our moon to look like the actual moon that we see outside because all the cool creatures come out when the moon shines. So we want that moon to be nice and bright and inspiring to these fun creatures that we're going to be making. So again, I just added a touch of brown and a touch of black and I'm just lightly kind of doing these tiny little circles. You could dot it if you want to, but I'm not pressing really hard on the canvas. This way I can just kind of get these little um, variations in the color. And if you can get it to nice and bright over here, and it looks like I just ran into a little bit of wet blue, which is totally fine because there's blue in the moon too sometimes. Um, so if you run into a little bit of wet blue, don't worry about it. And then when you get that moon all nice and bright, bright enough for those cool creatures to, to find their way through the wilderness, we are going to actually switch brushes to our medium brush. So once you get this moon the way that you want it, you can put this big brush away in your water cup and take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step, we are making the stems for our mushrooms and our flowers. And the colors I'm gonna be using are brown and white. So I'm gonna start with just brown on my brush and I'm gonna decide where I want my stems to go. So the stems for the mushrooms are gonna be much wider than the stems for the flowers. And I think I'm gonna have a mushroom here and a mushroom over here. So I'm going to um, put my stem in through here. I want it to be wider at the base and more narrow at the top. And I'm just gonna start it with brown. Once I get it where I want it to go, then I'll just touch my brush a little bit into white and just kind of put these little white streaks throughout it. And that way it kind of looks like it's lumpy and bumpy and you know, the, I think, I guess mushroom stems, they can have all kinds of stuff on them. They can be smooth or they can be lumpy and bumpy like a, like um, the bark on a tree. So just have fun with it. I'm gonna do my other one over here somewhere. This one's gonna be kind of taller. I just picked up brown, but I also had white on my brush. So if it's too light for you, just wipe your brush on your paper towel just to get yourself started. And I want this one to be wider at the bottom. And these are gonna be pretty darn big um, mushrooms. So you can make yours as big as you want. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of white into it again, just so, one, I don't want it to be see-through. I don't want to be able to see the, um, the line of the land behind it. So I definitely wanna make sure I have used some white in there. And if you wanna have some fun, you can make, especially on this one, the left side lighter because the moon is over on the left. But that's just, you know, a little added extra detail if you want to, great. If not, no worries. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to do some stems for some flowers. So for me, I'm just going to kind of have fun and maybe put a couple in through here. And I'm just going to have brown and white on my brush at the same time for my flowers. And think of these as just long pieces of grass. So brown and white, and I'm just kind of having fun flicking a few here and there. And then when I'm all done with this step, I am gonna use this same brush for the next step. So I'm gonna wash it and dry it and take a bite of my yummy cookie. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step, we are using our medium brush. We're gonna do the base coat for our mushroom tops and our flowers. So you can really have these whatever color you want, but because you have a dark background, I do recommend using white with whatever color you choose. So that way it'll cover nicely. So I'm gonna use, um, the colors I'm gonna use are yellow, orange, and white. 
And how I'm going to do this is I'm going to pick up whatever that darker color is and a little bit of white and I'm going to make kind of my outline for my mushrooms and I'm going to have a whole lot of fun with these. I'm just doing kind of like a wobbly line underneath and then kind of a really fun top to it. You can make it in whatever shape you want. Mushrooms come in all kinds of colors and all kinds of shapes and oops, I just dropped some paint there. That's going to add to my flower I'm going to be doing in a minute. And then I'm putting the paint on pretty heavy so that way it covers um, the, the blue behind it. Um, but we are going to be doing another layer laid or another detail on it, which is going to be the dots on it. We'll do those later. Those will help to cover um, the background paint as well. So if you don't get perfect coverage this um, go around, don't worry about it. You'll have an opportunity to, to do that later as well. And I want to make sure I cover up, you know, have a nice clean area where it meets the stem of it. And you don't have to use any particular brush stroke. I'm just kind of painting it on here, making sure I have good coverage. You could dot it if you wanted to. You could just do a nice loose brush stroke. And you could also do a second layer if you wanted to. That's totally fine. Um, the second layer would definitely help get that coverage if you wanted to. And it's okay if you have light spots and dark spots. That's, you know, mother nature at her finest. She has a lot of different colors in her, in her, you know, fun pieces of, um, you know, mushrooms and all kinds of stuff that's out there. So that's going to be that one. I'm not even going to wash my brush. Oh, maybe I will. Cause I want to go use yellow and white for the other mushroom. So I just quickly washed and dried it. I'm picking up yellow and a little bit of white and I'm going to do the same thing with this one. I'm going to make whatever kind of shape I want for this particular mushroom. And you can see it's uh, pretty see-through because the I didn't use a lot of white on it. So now I'm picking up more white just so I can get a nice good coverage. And again, you can have fun with these shapes. It's a mushroom. They come in all different kinds of shapes. So you can have a little bottom poke out if you want to. It's That's the beauty of this type of painting. You can kind of use your imagination and it can be a fun, lifelike kind of mushroom or an imaginary mushroom. Whatever you want it to be is totally fine. And I'm just making sure I got the whole thing covered. And now I'm going to go right into my flowers. And the flowers are going to be the same thing. So I've got yellow and white on my brush right now. And you can do flowers with petals or flowers with dots or little tulips. So I'm just going to kind of do maybe a couple of circles. I'll do, I'm going to do some with this yellow combination. Maybe I make, you know, little, just little dots if I want smaller ones. So have fun with this. You can make, you know, a hundred flowers or two flowers, whatever, you know, is visually appealing to you. I've got a couple of my yellow ones and I'm going to move on and just pick up some of my orange and white. You can wash your brush if you want to. You don't have to if you don't want to. It's, you know, really up to you. I'm going to just put little polka dots down there. Maybe I've got a couple in through here. And again, you can just dot them. You can make little, you could even just do like little petals like this if you wanted to. You can really have fun with it. You can make whatever, you know, imaginary ones come out of your head. I can put a little dot in the middle. So just have fun with them. Make, your, make yourself a, you know, a nice forest or a fun kind of, little area with some wild flowers. You can put some at the bottom of your, of your mushrooms if you want. And that's all I'm going to do for that step. Um, let's see, what are we going to do? We're going to switch brushes to our small brush for the next step. So when you're done with your base coat, just put the medium brush away in your water cup, take a bite of your cookie, and get ready for the next step. All right. So I'm really excited about this step. We are doing our fun frog. Yeah! Um, we're doing the base coat, and I'm going to be using my small brush to do this. 
The colors I'm using are green, yellow, and white. And I'm gonna use them on my brush at the same time. So that way, while I'm creating this frog, I'm gonna have light spots and dark spots and I want it to be that way. I kinda wanna blend my paint on the canvas. So how I'm gonna do this is we're gonna do a, a series of shapes um, and you're just gonna follow me one shape at a time. And by the time we're done, hopefully we'll have this fun frog. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna put yellow, green, and white on my brush at the same time. Uh, the first shape I'm gonna do is a shape for the head and it's gonna go somewhere in this vicinity. It's gonna be kind of like um, an oval with like almost a little pointy bottom to it, but a, a tip to the side. So here I go, I'm gonna make a kind of an oval like this. And then I'm gonna just bring down a little pointy part in through here and I'm just gonna color it in. Green, yellow, and white. So kind of an oval with a little bit of a pointy part down here. And then once I get that on there, then I'm gonna put two bumps for the eyes on the top of the head. So I want those to come somewhere in this vicinity. So I'm gonna make one bump and I'm gonna have them kind of touching each other. So then two bump and then just color them in. So two bumps, color them in. And then the next shape I'm gonna do is kind of like a oval, but it's gonna be diagonal, it's gonna go that way. It's gonna be longer than the head. So if this is the length of your head, make your body a little bit longer. It's gonna start right here where this eye meets the face, and then it's gonna end up, you have this pointy part here, you wanna stop your body somewhere above that pointy part. So here I go, I've made my two marks. I made a mark here and a mark here, and now I'm going to make a big oval. Don't go too far near the end of your canvas because you need space for the legs. And here I go. I'm gonna make my big oval. It's up at a diagonal. Gotta reload my brush here. It's a little bit longer than my um, head and then I'm just coloring it in. So if the body ends up being a little bit lighter or darker than the head, that's okay. His body can, or her body, we don't know if it's a he or she, um, could have definitely a little bit different color than the face. And that also helps you to make it look, you know, be able to dis, dis see what um, the face is versus the body. But I definitely wanna make sure I get rid of the blue behind it, so if you need to add a little bit of extra white, just add a little extra white. Okay, now I'm gonna make some legs. So I'm just reloading my brush with green, yellow, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna do a curved line. I'm gonna start a little bit back from, we'll call that the butt, <laughs> a little bit back to up, up here a little bit, and it's gonna be a curved line. I'm gonna go up and down, something like that. Then I'm gonna do another one of these from over here, but in the opposite direction, something like that. Now I'm gonna, those are the legs. Now I'm gonna put some feet. So how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna kind of mush my brush a little bit like that and go one, two, three, and I'm gonna put a little ball at the end of each one of those toes. And I'm gonna do the same thing for this one, only this one I'm gonna come down this direction. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, and put a, a little ball on the end of each toe. Just gonna fill that in a little bit. Now I'm gonna do the arms coming out. So yellow, green, and white, reloading my brush. I'm gonna have this first arm coming out like at the, the chin. This is gonna be our chin, and it's gonna come kind of diagonal like that, so something like that. And then I'm gonna do the other one. It's gonna come out at a different angle. That's gonna make it look a little bit funner, like it's, oh no! You know, he's like trying to spread his arms to catch this mushroom that he's ready to land on. 
So this one's coming out at a little bit different of an angle. Then I'm going to make a little palm for each hand. So I'm going to do a circle, a circle, and then I'm going to put some fingers coming out. So I have one, two, three, four, and a little ball on each end, three, four. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. Well, you, can, you can have them coming out in whatever direction you want, just I'm going to do four. One, two, three, four, and make little balls at the end of them. And that's all I'm going to do for the base coat of my frog. So we're going to use this, uh, let's see, what brush we're going to use. We're going to use our medium brush for the next step. So when you're done with this, put the small brush away in your water cup, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right. So what we're going to do for the next step, I'm using my medium brush and I'm making white dots all over the place. So we're going to make white dots for our stars and the dots on the top of our um, mushrooms. So I'm just taking my medium brush and literally I'm just kind of tapping it onto my mushroom. I'm not really concerned that these are perfect circular dots. Um, you could be very systematic with yours and make them all really uber perfect. Totally up to you. For me, I like a little bit of chaos in my paintings. So this is definitely feeds my, my way of how I paint. Um, and I'm just going to kind of tackle my, my mushrooms first. And if you run into wet paint on your mushrooms, don't worry about it. That's just going to make it look like you have different, you know, colored dots. Um, you could even make, you could make these really fun and have stripes on them. Or you could have, I don't know, big open circles. Or you could have little hearts on them if you wanted to. You can decorate these whatever way you want. You could even bring that original color and make, you know, darker dots if you wanted to. But I'm just going to stick with white dots on mine. And if you wanted to make different ones, you could certainly do that. And then when I get all my dots on my mushrooms, I'm going to start dotting my sky. So this is going to be my little stars. So I like to kind of make bigger stars and smaller stars. You can think of this like a constellation where you've got the Big Dipper or the Little Dipper. Um, you can have shooting stars, you can have UFOs, you could make your stars look, you know, like a five point real star. So whatever you want, whatever is visually appealing to you, um, have, have fun with it. This is meant to be your painting. You can have as much, you know, systematic or chaotic um, stars that you want if you have little ones and big ones that makes it look a little bit more natural um but if you have i just noticed i forgot to put a flower in front of there so we're just going to put a whole bunch of little stars there um maybe yours end up looking you know if you've got a ton of stars maybe yours end up looking like it's snowing out so you can just have a whole bunch of fun with this um some people like to take their brush and flick the paint at the canvas but I don't want to get stars all over my frogs so this is the way I'm choosing to do it with just a whole bunch of little tiny polka dots but you can see I've got them in a you know in a non-uniform kind of way I sometimes use my hand to brace myself so I don't um, push it too hard all the time but you can certainly have fun and make a thousand stars Maybe this is a really clear summer night when all the critters want to come out and play and because they can see and maybe that's why you can see a billion stars in the sky. And then we are going to, after you get all your stars, we're going to um, switch brushes to the small brush. So after your stars have glittered your sky, you can put that big brush away in your water cup, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, now is the time to bring your frog to life. We're gonna be using the small brush to do the final details on our frog. Um, the colors that I'm gonna be using are white, black, and orange. And we're gonna do this in a kind of a systematic step so things will dry to 
um, so we can do you know things on top of each other. So how I'm going to do this, I'm going to start with white. I put a little bit of white on my brush and I'm going to make two white eyes. So we've already got the bumps for them. So I want to keep, I'm doing like ovals, I want to keep a little bit of green around the outside of the eye. And it's okay if you bring it into the face a little bit. And I want, it, I want them to be a little bit separate from each other. So I have green around the eye and a little bit in between. And then I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. So just quickly rinse your brush. And then I'm gonna use black paint to create the, um, the smile, so to speak. So we've gotta also kind of give it a nose. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start from between these eyes and I'm gonna do like a little curve in through here and bring it back over to this side of the cheek and we're, then we're gonna make a couple of cheeks. So here we go. I'm gonna start at the nose or between the eyes and don't you don't have to press hard. Um, so I want my line kind of on the slender side and I'm gonna bring it over here. And if you have to, you can put a little bit of water in your paint. That's gonna allow you to get a, a kind of a smoother line. And then I'm gonna give it a little cheek like that. And you can put one over here too. And then I need to give it a mouth. So from about this part, I'm gonna kind of scoop and give myself a big like open mouth. So here we go. And I'm gonna bring it close to the, the chin, but not all the way. And then I'm just gonna color it in black. And you want kind of a thin coat of black. You don't have to have it really too thick because we want it to kind of dry quickly. Um, but while this is drying, I'm still gonna use the small brush with black paint. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give um, my cute eyes some eyebrows. <laughs> so I'm gonna take black paint and they're gonna be kind of suspended because to me this frog is like, oh, he's like, woohoo, jumping off from one mushroom to the other and his eyebrows are so wide open. So I'm gonna put them in the air. <laughs> and this is gonna give the illusion that he's flying through the air. Yeah. And then, you know, maybe he's, you know, fun on a roller coaster and everything's going backwards. And I'm gonna use that black to also put like a shadow on the right side of the frog. So this is just kind of underlining or outlining the right side of the frog. So think of this as the right side of the belly and this is the shadow side because this is your moon over here. So I just have black paint and I'm just gonna kind of outline my belly, my butt, maybe the right side of that face a little bit, the right side of the arm. And these are just little black lines you could even do your, your hand a little bit if you wanted to. Just a little bit of black paint. And think of it on the side that's opposite where the, the moon is. So if the moon is here, it's on the other side. And, you know, you can have fun with this. Just, you know, make these little lines. It brings it more into like a cartoon kind of a place, which is really neat. Um, so if those of you who, who, you know, may have the desire to do illustrations, this is a great technique that helps to create that illustration type look. So if you're into doing cartoons, um, putting this little black line will help to give you that cartoon type illusion, which is great. And then I'm going to do it again over here. So again, it's all on that right hand side. You know, this frog is having so much fun. Maybe he's ready to tell a joke and he's gonna have his buddies come and take his mushroom ride with him. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is with still black on my brush, I'm gonna put two pupils in my eyeballs and I'm gonna put them to the left. And you could totally um, gain inspiration by looking up little emojis or stuff to put different expressions on the faces but that's, you know, up to you. There's, you know, so many different things that you can do with the eyebrows. Maybe he looks confused or, you know, sad or he's having fun and he's just, you know, jumping away. 
Um, and now I'm gonna, I'm quickly just kind of washing and drying my brush. I can put the tongue on there and I'm gonna do that with the orange paint. So for me, what I'm gonna do is, um, I don't want it to kind of, I, I wanna have some black areas still left in there. So I'm just taking the orange and I'm just kind of doing like one hump and then two hump. And then I'm just gonna kind of fill in the bottom. And this will get a little bit darker when it dries. Um, so if it gets too dark, you might just wanna do two, two layers on it, um, but I'm just gonna do the one. And if you lose that little black line in the middle, you can always just pick up a little bit of black and do that little line down the center of the tongue. Um, I think I might put a little bit more orange on the bottom part of this. And then we have one final step to go, and it's gonna be with this small brush. So once you have all of these fun details on your frog, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the last step. All right, so last step to any good painting is to sign it. I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. This time, I think I'm gonna sign mine in the bottom right and I'm gonna use black paint. I sign mine with my initials you could certainly sign yours with your first name, with, uh, you could put the date on there, you could use a little symbol, you could sign it in the trunk of your mushrooms. Whatever you decide is totally fine by me. And that's gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you loved your cookies. <laughs> I hope you made your frog freaking fun and, and happy and joyful um, and I, Totally look forward to painting and eating cookies with you again sometime.